you can't feel pain in your brain. So when you feel a pain from a headache, that's neurotransmission signaling pain to the brain. It's not the brain saying, oh, I'm very hurt here. In that regard, when your neurons are inflamed, it creates a dysfunction towards mood. It creates some level of symptom to tell you something's not right here. For me, the cue is music. So I noticed that after a while, your neuroinflammation is pretty high from the heavy training, maybe after four weeks or six weeks of kicking in the gym. And then the songs that I usually go like, you know, yeah, this is my jam. I'm going to the gym, going to go train. Then you're like, this, I hate this fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> then it's time for a week off. Take a little break. After a week, I'm right back on the on the motorbike. I'm like, yeah, this is my jam. And that's, that's a very easy way to tell. But people never want to take a break. Anger, like for guys listeners, anger is a, an outcome. It's a secondary emotion. So anger isn't a primary emotion. When you feel anger, there's a trigger to being angry. And it could mm -hmm. be sadness that makes you feel angry. It could be frustration. It could be confusion. But most guys just say, I'm an angry person. They never say, I'm an angry person because I'm frustrated because I hate my job or I hate this in my life. They don't actually sit and truthfully speak to themselves and say, well, I am angry because of this secondary emotion and problem. When I fix that problem, you might have still some periods where you're frustrated and become angry, but you can then understand, well, where was the trigger from the anger? And then obviously steroids will amplify that. Yeah, but bodybuilding keeps the anger going. I had it for years. <laughs> Hey, I, the bodybuilding fuels the anger and the anger fuels the bodybuilding. You got this synergistic, symbiotic, parasitic relationship and, and it fuels on both ends. And it's great for bodybuilding, but it's not good for your mental health. And I think you need to let it go, all of it, for about a year. So you need to retire, let the anger go, maybe talk to a therapist or travel where you have a lot of time for introspection, which is where I resolved most of my... Uh, <laughs> my drama and sadness from the past. Um, and then you can bodybuild without this bullshit, but you need to let it go completely. Um, yeah. And that's very hard for a lot of people. And even, yeah. you know, having, even before all this, you know, I, I started to realize how we, how we intrinsic motivate, intrinsically motivate ourselves to train, even when we're on or off, but more so on is another big thing is, if you need to put on like Slipknot to do it, like a heavy loading set where it's just pure rage filled aggression to lift, how can you replicate that if you forget your, like your, your phone or your MP3 player for your music and you have to listen to the, the gym's music? That of itself will drive more aggression because now you're more frustrated with yourself for leaving your music. Yeah, childhood behind. trauma. <laughs> yeah, and now you've now you've <laughs> that's what now it's there now, for, bro. <laughs> now, you know, you've you've now you've now not got the trigger that allows you to psychologically create strength because a lot of a lot of things we do, bodybuilding and strength. Some of it comes from obviously neuromuscular, but it's also psychologically driven of yeah, being able yeah. to activate that strength. Um, and I, I used to observe this all the time. You'd be listening to like, like I said, Slipknot or really intense heavy metal. You would do your heavy loading set. And then when you're leaving the gym, you just feel like flat. You feel yeah. like you've, you've released all of that negative energy, but now you're in a position where you're just like, it, numb is the best way to describe it. You, you've delved with depleting that negative energy in an outlet but there's nothing to fill up the cup positively with happiness or whatever so you, you just view it as job done go home mm. eat it's sleep you know, check-ins you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think i did it for like seven years right the first thing in the morning coffee meal and then go to the gym to release otherwise my whole day would be ruined i'd be angry all day and then, and then you go to the gym to kind of numb yourself. And I was like, oh, I'm good now. <laughs> but it's just positive enforcement. And I really, like, I learned this after the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease where I came off everything basically and I fasted myself into healthiness again. I, I couldn't uh, tap into the craziness anymore. And that made me a, a, a worse bodybuilder. 
overall, but a much happier person and a much more productive person and a much more caring person because I didn't have to go through this phase of like anger management in the morning by literally making myself tired in the gym and releasing everything there. Um, but yeah, my, my physique also declined because I couldn't bring that intensity to the gym anymore. Like the, the craziness of burying yourself in heavy weights and somehow managing to, you know, f- muster up six to eight reps. Now I do six to eight reps with a lot less weight because the anger isn't there to fuel it. Yeah. So I, I, for the sake of bodybuilding, you, if you want to be a good bodybuilder, you probably need it. But it's positive reinforcements to the point you, you're in this perpetually angry state where you're just always r- looking for an outlet. And whether that's masturbation or the gym <laughs> <laughs> or online shopping, <laughs> you gotta you gotta release somehow. So now I only got online shopping left. It sucks, man. It sucks, but it's a, a quality of life has improved. I will say that. Yeah. I, I think if we're looking at you know someone asked about strategies of improving brain health with with steroids. Obviously, you've done a, a series with. Mm-hmm tier lists of supplements and maybe peptides and medications. I guess one thing we have to view with neuroinflammation, and I found this fascinating when I I read about years ago, was depression as a biochemical uh, reaction, if you want to put it that way, is, is an outcome symptom to an underlying problem. So depression isn't like heart failure or kidney disease depression is a symptom to neurological dysfunction Mm -hmm. and so when you view it that way you then see that neuroinflammation doesn't really have the the best way to describe is if anyone has ever watched hannibal the second like science of the lamb film oh yeah Uh uh-huh where he basically eats the guy's brain with his, at the very end of the movie, he removes the guy's skull cap and he's Mm. eating the brain and feeding the guy his own brain. Your brain can't feel pain. It's well known you, you can't feel pain in your brain. So when you feel a pain from a headache, that's neurotransmission signaling pain to the brain. It's not the brain saying, oh, I'm very hurt here. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, when your neurons are inflamed, you don't tell you I'm inflamed like when you've got tennis elbow or tendonitis. It creates a dysfunction towards mood. It creates some level of symptom to tell you something's not right here in terms of our chemical balance, uh, neurochemical stress, oxidative stress, whatever. So then you start to go, okay, well, if I have signs of uh, neural dysfunction, like aggressive behavior, depressive symptoms, you sleep, have to start sleep questioning rhythm. sleep. You you then delve into the bigger picture of, well, what is happening in my brain? My brain is trying to tell me there's a problem. No. For, for me, then, the cue is music. So I noticed that after a while, your neuroinflammation is pretty high from the heavy training, maybe after four weeks or six weeks of kicking ass in the gym. And then the songs that I usually go like, you know, yeah, this is my jam. I'm going to the gym, going to go train. Then you're like, this, I hate this fucking song. <laughs> then it's time for a week off. And then <laughs> as soon as you take a week off, you let the neuroinflammation come down, right? You take a little break. You don't eat so much. You let your digestive try come in. All the inflammation in the muscle goes away. Maybe fast a little bit. Take a little break. After a week, I'm right back on the on the motorbike. I'm like, yeah, this is my jam. And that's, that's a very easy way to tell. But people never want to take a break. And thus the neuroinflammation remains. And they never get that sense of, you know, I had a good night's sleep late last night. Oh, I'm really enjoying this sense of music. Oh, I'm really in a good mood just for no reason. I'm happy to be alive. I mean, how many bodybuilders can say that? I'm yes. happy to be. You'll be, no, you'll, you'll be surprised, dude. Many people are just fucked. <laughs> I mean, after years, why do you think I stopped coaching? I couldn't deal with the shit anymore. <laughs> people were just so angry. I'm like, fuck, dude, just take a week off. Go on holiday. Let the stress come down and, and the inflammation and the intestinal problems. And your life is so much better if you just take a week of vacation from the bodybuilding stuff. Yeah, I'm in a good mood because last week I took a deal. So uh, it helps. I think, 